Shields up, Iron Breakers. How's everybody doing today? We have a very special stream today. As you guys can see, there is a big box here uh, in front of me. I'm actually um, using the PlayStation camera to capture this because I already have like a bunch of cameras set up on the other computer. I'm I was all out. So basically, we're using the PlayStation camera. So the quality is not as good as I'd like. And also, there's the little droid dude there in the corner who constantly wants me to play with him. But I'm like, no, I'm just using the camera right now, dude. So you can um, you can shut the hell up and you can freaking stay there. Anyway, before I um, before I start on this video, I need to give a big shout out to the person who made this particular video possible, and that is Paven B. You guys probably have seen him in chat. Uh, a whole bunch of times. Uh, he knew that I was um, eyeballing this, and I was thinking about getting it, but I hadn't really, you know, I hadn't really made up my mind. And he donated um, for the specific purpose for me to buy this. Uh, and so, obviously, I bought it, and today we're going to be doing an unboxing, and we're going to be setting this up in Elite Dangerous um, so that we can um, check it out and see what it's like to actually fly... Um, actually fly the spaceships with a proper joystick and thruster control you can see that paven b is in chat there right now paven b thank you very much dude you made this possible anyway let's get this bad boy started so i already removed all the saran wrap because like they put so much saran wrap around this thing you guys you, you'd go insane just a ridiculous amounts of saran wrap going in there okay now then let's open up the box and see what's actually inside shall we so the first thing that we're greeted with is the war thunder leaflet which to be honest i don't really play war thunder i don't have any plans to use this thing so i don't know oh yeah i forgot to like showcase the whole box so let's actually do a, a little bit of a, a turnaround like like a typical unboxing you can see i don't do a lot of these so this is the top of the box where they tell you that you can actually separate the joystick from the throttle thing, which is pretty cool. Uh, this is kind of, I guess this is the front, although it's like, it's almost got like two sides of the front. So this is one of the sides and then the other side, which is exactly the same thing, is the back. It seems to be just like copy pasta, straight up. And then the actual sides of the box just have a bunch of boring stuff. What is, what is this even? Ready to take off. It's just like a bunch of um, PR blurbs, basically. It's got a bunch of PR blurbs in there. That's all that thing is. Uh, and the bottom of the box is just like straight up white. So white, in fact, that because of all the lighting that I have set up right now, you can't even see it. Anyway, let's get back to opening this sucker. Okay. So, looks like everything is pretty much just encased in... I'm not sure what you guys call this in English. I think, is it styrofoam? I'm, I'm not sure if this is called styrofoam in English. In Portuguese, it's sferovit. But, uh, yeah, you guys probably have no idea what the hell that means. But, I'm going to put this down. In the box. No, nothing else in there. So, just going to set this box down. <clears throat> Imagine this plus PlayStation VR and Elite. Dude, if they actually make PlayStation VR work, that's it. That's it. It's just like I'm going to check out of real life. And I'm just going to like, I'm going to turn on the stream. And it's going to be just like a forever stream. And I'm never going to leave. My wife will feed me infravenously. And then I will just be like hooked in the galaxy forever. Okay, I'm going to set this down like this. Take off the top. And see what we got. Looks like I set it down in the best possible way. So, here we have... Oh, they're both attached. So, one, once I pull one of them out, I have to pull both. That's right, I forgot. They're, they're both, like, attached through uh, a cable. So, this is not a wireless system. I think everything in this system is pretty much cabled. Which means I'll have to yank both of them out at the same time okay now nothing left in the styrofoam encasing I'm gonna move that away 
that we can focus on the real deal. Unfortunately, my table is also black, so there's not a whole lot of contrast. But this is the joystick unit. It's got a lot. Whoa. There is something that is making this uneven. Is it the cable? Why is this thing uneven? Oh, yeah, it is the cable. Okay, like this cable down here, it was making the, the surface uneven, which was going to make this unusable. So you have to actually line it up like that. Okay, now we're talking. It's got a lot of uh, resistance to it. I believe the resistance is adjustable through this thing in the bottom here. Not sure if I'll want to adjust it or not. For now, probably going to be playing around with the default settings. And then after I get some flight experience with it, then I'm going to start messing around with the additional settings. So we have a, um, I think you call this a hat uh, thingy. This is pretty much going to represent, I've, I've, I've already used one of these because a friend of mine bought one. And I kind of checked out his. So this kind of you, is your D-pad. So you press this down, press this up. It's D-pad up, D-pad left, D-pad right. I'm not sure what we're going to be doing with L1 um, because pretty much there's also an L1 and an R1 on this side. Then there's an L3 button right here. The trigger is R1, but I believe that they set everything up so that it works uh, in a decent way for Elite Dangerous. But we'll see. We're going to find out because we're going to go straight from the unboxing um, into the actual gameplay session. Okay. BGOC Crew Gaming. So you chose HOTUS 4 instead of X. Is X not supported for PlayStation 4? I'm not entirely sure, but what happened was Paven B donated for me to get this one, so I got this one. It's like straight up. Okay. Now, we also have the throttle here. I need to line up the cable on the throttle as well to make sure that it is not uneven. Once again, all these things have like cable pathways so that you can put the cables in there properly. That's still a little bit of styrofoam in here. Okay. There's also, um, you also have the option if you want to of like attaching both of them so that you can kind of like fly like this. But to be completely honest, I feel it's going to be more comfortable if you separate them, which is why I put the camera the way it is. Wow, this, these cables are actually pretty small. Is like my plan was to have the thruster here where you see now and then the joystick here which is also why i kind of raised my chair a little bit um wow you guys are just getting straight up crotch cam right now <laughs> but anyway um i've also adjusted my chair a little bit to allow me to fly ships like this i'm still not sure this is going to be the most comfortable i'll have to adjust accordingly but like yeah this is what it's going to look like when I'm playing Elite Dangerous from now on. I was hoping this cable was a little bit longer, though. Gotta be honest, I really hoped the cable that unites these two is like, this is not... Mm, yeah, I'm going to have to move it a little bit to get some proper spacing. But yeah, this, this kind of works. Okay. So, apparently there's nothing else in the box. So, the unboxing section of this video pretty much over so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna crash a ship we're gonna pretty much destroy a ship because i'm gonna need to learn how to use this now last night i actually went crazy i went crazy and i'm gonna show you uh, how first let's hook this sucker up to my ps4 give me a second here where's my controller that's my controller ha i actually turn on my controller let's close this yeah, the image is flipped because the camera was like putting everything flipped and then you guys wouldn't be able to re-thrust master properly, which is why I just changed that. Well, let me just go ahead and flip this over again. What the hell? Transform. Oh, I think I have the wrong thing selected. Ugh. Transform. Flip horizontal. There we go. Okay. Also... I need to unmute because that thing was just playing this annoying little jingle that was going to annoy the crap out of you guys. But now 
We're gonna start Elite Dangerous, but first let me hook up the uh, joystick. I think the connecting cable is longer. Check the throttle bottom. Oh, you're right. Oh, this is going to make a big difference. Ah, now you're talking. Oh, this, ac this is actually very well designed. Ah, there we go. Now we got some space. Ah, now, now we got some proper spacing. This is going to be crazy. This is going to be insane. Okay, so theoretically, the joystick is, is already on. Now, where is it? It's not working, though. Whoop. Controller connected. Who is using? Oh, so it just counts as a new controller very well. I am using this controller. Aha. Interesting. It's, it says that it doesn't have any battery. I'm already using the joystick to control the console at this point. So now let's launch Elite Dangerous and see what happens. Shit's about to get real. We should, we should at some point, we should at some point um, play Dark Souls 3 with a joystick. That's going to be a thing. <laughs> play Dark Souls 3 with a HOTUS. <laughs> you know I'm going to have to do it. Okay. How do I, oh yeah, the X is over here. It's kind of weird because, like, I'm going to have to get used to using um, the X buttons. They're not the X buttons. The faceplate buttons are on the side of the joystick, which essentially means you'll have to use the faceplate the face buttons with uh, the exact opposite hand that you used to. Because, like, usually faceplate buttons me means right hand. And with this, faceplate buttons is going to mean left hand. It's going to be a little bit... Uh, of getting used to. I am so going to destroy my ship. It's gonna be pretty crazy. It's X to begin. I'm going to have to go through the controls because I know for a fact that there's a lot of controls that I want that I want to do that don't come by default. Uh, let's start it up, though, so that I can tell you guys about the new ships and stuff. <clears throat> so this ship, for those of you who don't know, this is a Python. Uh, I paid 40, 48 million credits for this ship, and I regret it. It was basically almost all of my money, and I knew better. I shouldn't have done it, because buying a really expensive ship uh, and not be left with a whole lot of money means that your really expensive ship is going to be pretty crappy, because you're not going to have enough money to really proper deck it out. So, yeah, that was a mistake I did, but it's okay. I wanted to get a bigger ship, so we don't have the keel back anymore. We got rid of it. However, this is not the ship we're going to be flying, because this ship is going to be slow, and it's not really going to allow me to test out the features of the joystick. The ship we're going to be flying... Uh, Starport services, yes. Shipyard. Did I just crash the game? What the hell? Okay. Now, in order for me to go sideways, how do I go sideways? 
I have no idea how to go sideways. No. Oh. Okay. Very well. Stored ships. Use this ship. So, when I bought the Python, the first problem that happened was um, Python has like zero jump capability when you first buy it. Damn ship can't jump at all. So basically my ship ended up being stuck wherever I, I started off, which was not here. And so I was like, well, I have to get another ship and I want to get a ship that can jump like nobody's business. So this is one of the cheapest slash highest jumping capability ships you can possibly get. It is the Diamondback Explorer and it is a beast. So, let me just take her out. I don't have good guns on this ship, though. So, this is just going to be mostly a flight test. So, let me see here. Let's crash our ship into this space station. And then say it's someone else's fault. <laughs> okay. So, I believe... This button makes it go up. It does not. Oh, shit! I got an idea. Can we pretend this didn't happen? So apparently it's not using joystick controls yet. So instead of using the lift button, I shot the station. I shot the fucking station. And they instantly shot me down. <laughs> what the hell was that? I think I got to go into the options and make sure the game understands I'm using the joystick. Yeah, hauler is the best jump to cost, but I didn't just want to buy a hauler. <laughs> hey guys, it's not funny. This shit ain't funny, man. <laughs> I hope I don't have to pay for it. Maybe the game didn't save yet. Or maybe it did. I better not have lost my damn ship. That's all I'm going to say. Motherfucker! Well, there you go. Three hundred thousand bones. When I'm, I'm actually not swimming in cash right now, so that is gonna hurt me. That is gonna hurt me real bad. The station didn't think it was funny. I bet you guys thought it was funny. God damn it. It's a good thing I didn't try to take out the Python first. That was going to be a real hit in my bank account. That would have been a 3 million rebuy. That was so bad. That was real bad. I can't believe that just happened. Okay. So before we do anything, where's the start button? Here we go. Okay, listen, bro, I need you to understand I'm playing with a joystick right now, okay? How do I tell you I'm playing with a joystick? There you go. Thrustmaster HOTUS 4. I thought it was going to detect that I was playing with the HOTUS. Turns out it didn't. Now it has, and now let me take a look. How do I see flight rotation? 
Yo, axes. Uh, like thrust. Lateral thrust, thrust up, thrust down. Okay. This is working now. Alternate flight controls. We don't need alternate flight controls with this, I don't think. Flight throttle. Throttle axis, throttle increments, yada, yada, yada. I'm assuming you guys know what you're doing with this. Flight landing overrides, whatever. Flight miscellaneous. Toggle flight assist. Triangle plus R2. Jesus, that is... That is not good. <laughs> that is not a very good thing. This is our boost. Not a huge fan of where the boost is either, but we'll see. Tuggle frame shift drive. Okay, so there's no tuggle for the frame shift drive, so I would very much want one. There. At least I think that's what I want. This is because I noticed that... Uh, with my friend stick, I noticed that I had to always do either super cruise. Um, I'm sorry, I got like this cough drop. That's why I'm talking like an idiot. But uh, I noticed that I always had to uh, use the hat thing to do super cruise, which is something that I don't want to have to do. Next, targeting. Uh, I also want to be able to do a shortcut to release cockpit view, but I'm not sure how I'm going to be able to do that. Because I want to be able to get a good look at the cockpit as well. Yeah, let's take a look at weapons. Oh, crap, I forgot to... I need to like be... Whoa, 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 what are you doing? Chill. It's chill. Man, this is going to take a lot of getting used to. Primary fire R1, secondary fire L1. Cycle next fire group, square plus, okay, so you're gonna cycle using R2s here. Play hard points, square, okay. Firing deploys hard points, yep. Cooling, oh, huh. silent running. Ship lights, sensor zoom, divert power, weapons, engine systems, power distribution, cargo scoop. Most of the stuff is actually using the same controls you use regularly so this was actually really well thought out then again they've had a couple of years to think this through I'm, i'd imagine target panel comms panel autofocus on text input field quick comms roll panel okay interface mode head look mode how do i use head look mode set how to handle movement with an axe accumulate will move the head into direction speed based on the input but will remain fixed in that direction once input is stopped it looks moving on, look up and down axis. How do I, what button turns on? What button turns this on though? That's the main thing. Oh. No, 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 no. Cancel, clear current binding. Ah. I would have to set it up. I wonder what L3 is being used for. So can I go like L3 and then this? Uh, some tells me this is not gonna work because, hmm. It's already set up for pitch axis. How do I go into head look mode? Head looks moving on. Enable motion head look. I can't use that, of course. But basically, I, I would need a key to go into head look mode. How do I go into head look mode? Well, then I could go like this. Then I'd be able to like look left, right, depending on what I'm doing. 
driving. It seems driving is probably drive assist. Oh, this is for the thing. Steering axis, roll axis. What? So the biggest thing is how do I turn on head look mode? It's like I want to do that, but I need to turn it on. Okay, let's just apply what we have now and see what it's looking like. So clearly head look mode is not on. Can't look around. So how would I go about doing head look mode? Okay, now this is working, this is good. Below me orbital. I don't get it. Rui, have you picked up Elite on PC? No, this is uh, PS4. Because I play with friends on PS4. And this is complicated. The setup portion is a pain. I mean, you could just go with the default settings. It's just I want to do some very specific things, specifically the head look mode thing. And I don't know how to do that. Uh, I should probably just look... There's probably a, bu a specific button that is assigned to it. Let's see. Lol. <laughs> it shows the controller. So it'd be, oh, it's R3. R3 is head look mode. So wait a second. So basically. If I do. How do I press this? Is it? Button in front here. Ah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, now I'm getting it. Although, I got to be honest, there's a better way of doing this. There is a much better way of doing this, not using the joystick. And now I know what I... See, I just wanted to see how the feature would work so that I could figure it out. And now I know. So. Controller layout. This was the one thing that I was very disappointed with when I saw my friend set up with the HOTUS was that he wasn't able to look around the cockpit. And I was like, I get it. It's something that you don't do that often. But it's something that I really, really like doing every now and then. And it's definitely something that I would have to configure in order to work. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go here. And the look up and down axis is going to be on the hat. Oh, I can't use the hat? Brack. Okay, so I'll have to use the joystick apparently. How about, no, wait. There's got to be something more to this. Right? This can't be the only option. Like, why wouldn't you be able to use the hat? It has to be an axis. How about... Ooh, dead zones. That's something... <laughs> That's something we haven't even touched on. The dead zones. <laughs> this is going to be crazy. Also, why am I messing around with the dead zone? Why can't I? Okay, we're going to do this, but I don't want a regular. Want inverted. This one can be regular. Enable motion head look. You can't do this because there's no motion sensor. 
at least I'm imagining there's no motion sensor on this um, on the joystick, but I could be wrong. I think if you clear the current settings, it will be R3 plus hat to look. Really? Then wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's uh, put everything the way it was. And I'm sorry, guys. I know that this is taking me a, a bit, but it's a big thing getting used to using something like this. So how about I just do this and then I just change. There is one thing that I want to change. Is it flight throttle? Not this. It's this. This is the one thing that I would have to change then. Because I want to make sure I get that. So let's apply. Oh, this is perfect. This is just perfect. So it is pretty much perfect the way it comes. It's just my friend didn't know about this. Okay, this is good. This is very good. It's like, I love looking around the cockpit. It's cool stuff. It's actually easier to look around the cockpit with a controller, but it's like, it doesn't have to be pitch precise. I just want to be able to look at it. So this works. Okay, boys, let's try this again. Okay, you guys think we should shoot the station again? Jesus, I've actually dipped below 10 million because of that shit. Okay, something that I'm already seeing is I'm too far away from the controls. I need the controls to be at least slightly closer. Okay. Now that we have that, take a quick look see at how this baby handles. Okay, there's not enough weight on the joystick for the amount of resistance that it's offering right now. I need to lower the resistance a little bit. Okay, because the joystick by default was offering so much resistance that like when I would actually move the stick, it would lift the base. So you might want to adjust that unless you have the joystick glued to your table. That might become an issue. Okay, so we still haven't crashed our ship here. Now let's try landing. Landing is going to take me even longer to get used to. Request denied. Please advance to 7.5 kilometers. Oh snap, I'm already that far away. I forget, this ship is actually fast. It feels so nice. Oh, this feels good. Okay. Let's boost up in there. Dude, you get so much more precision out of the ship control using a joystick versus using a controller. Like, look at how much smoother it is. We got the lower thrusters here. Crawl down a little bit. We're almost in range. Let's see if we can dock properly or if we're going to crash and burn. It's going to take me a while to gain the same confidence I have on the controller, though. That I can definitely tell. Request approved. Please set course 
Why do I have my heart points to play? I have no idea why my heart points were deployed there. My bad. 44. Okay. Oh yeah, it's like, I have more control, I'm just not used to the amount of control I have. Ah, oh, this is beautiful. Eh. Okay, where is... Landing gear would be here. Landing gear deployed. It was not the perfect landing, but we still landed it, and we didn't crash it, so that kind of works. So let's actually go on a mission, if I can find a decent mission to do here. We can't do combat missions on this ship right now, but I would very much like to do a passenger mission. Um, also something you might notice is that we're currently on Imperial Space. That is because I decided I'm actually going to be working for the Empire instead of the Federation because I like Empire ships better. I want to get myself, um, I want to get myself a, uh, whatchamacallit. What's the name of that thing? The Clipper. I want to get a Clipper. Even though I have a bigger ship now than the Clipper, it's like, I still want to get a Clipper. Okay, so we got Sightseeing Adventure. We got another Sightseeing Adventure. That's going to net us some cash, but I'd rather do a transport mission. Sightseeing adventure, sightseeing adventure, sightseeing adventure, transport. Although... Ooh. This ship is actually really good for doing passenger missions because of its jump capabilities. Which is why I wanted, I wanted to have this ship. So if we're going to do a sightseeing adventure, we probably should. We're going to do the one that pays the most. So, this. It's a criminal mastermind, which is bad, but whatever. Will I be getting... Delays are unlikely, low value target. It's actually not too far away. We could probably do this. Let's do it. It's a criminal mastermind though, so there's a lot of risk to a mission like this, but okay. And also, I'm flying a criminal mastermind on a Diamondback Explorer with almost no decent shields and no guns. We are not fighting. That is for damn sure. Ian Palang. This is where we gotta go. So, a lot of salutes. <laughs> it's gonna be like four jumps for 60, 64 light years. Not too bad. If I can say so myself. Am I right? Is it four jumps? It's three jumps, actually. <laughs> I love this ship's jump capability. It's so good. my way. Yeehaw! <laughs> I gotta be honest. So last night I did two purchases, right? I bought the Python and I bought the Diamondback Explorer. And I've been happier about buying the Diamondback Explorer than the Python. And that should say a lot.
Don't tell me you want something, you bastard. What do you want? Make sure I don't get scanned. Do you not know what I do for a living? Oh, shit! No! God damn it. No, fuck. Get me out of here. Full power to shields. Hurry it up. Hurry it up. Come on! Yeah! <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> Just straight up getting shot up as we're getting out of the fucking. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Police unit <laughs> engaging. <laughs> Ooh, this is one hell of a start. <laughs> Then again, I, I made the choice to take a fucking criminal mastermind on my very first mission. Arguably not the best choice, but hey, whatever. Actually, no, let's not charge her yet. Let's boost out of here. Jesus, full power to shields and they still haven't recovered. I lied. I actually have decent shields on the Diamondback. <laughs> no, I don't regret carrying him at all. That was even better. It was just... It was just a cool thing, because I haven't really tested out the limits of the Diamondback Explorer. So now I know I can outrun the police. So that's good. It's like... My friend was telling me, playing the game like this, it's a completely different game. And I have to say, he wasn't exaggerating. It's totally different. It's like, right now, it's still a little bit more awkward for me. So, like, I could probably play the game better with a controller... But it feels better playing it with a joystick. It's so much more immersive. It's insane. And I still like looking around the cockpit. Okay. Let's get out of here. Now, the worst part about this is I can't get scanned at all. So, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Can I just set up silent running? I've never set up silent running, but... Oh, I can't do it while I'm in cruise mode. Okay, so basically I have to instantly come here, activate that function the second I disembark on... Um, the second I disembark on... Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. How about... Throttle her down. How about we do... Fill too fast? Now, can I turn this on by default? And now... I believe that... What? Silent running means no shields? She... Well, Cannot try it out. Deploy. Why did I deploy my heart points? Engage. Oh, God. Four, three, two, Dude, silent running is no joke. Look at our heat. Fuck me. Ship's gonna get hot. Hot. Do you know where we're going, bro? Got the data for the next system I need to visit. I've uploaded it to your panel. Yan Palang A6. So that means I probably won't have to scan. I probably won't have to scan the nav beacon. Okay. Why is it? Alrighty then.
That's what happens when you close your heat exhausts. Okay. Also, where are we going next? Shit, I have a... I have a bounty? Fuck, I'm wanted now. <laughs> oh, this is good. <laughs> this is good. I'm going to be landing with a wanted bounty up. That's going to be beautiful. Okay, wait, no. First is Yan Palang. And what's the next one? I'll have to get here first to see where the next one is. Oh, it's going to be a 2 million run, so let's hope we make it. Ships are run on nuclear reactors, aren't they? I have no idea. Rust down, look for the beacon that the guy wants. Can you also adjust resistance on the throttle? That would be interesting. Because I'd actually love to get more resistance on the throttle. I need to check on that, but I don't think you can. But I'm going to overshoot it. Damn, the Diamondback Explorer can move. I'm thinking I'm probably going to um, set up the Python as a. I'm gonna set her up as a trading vessel mostly for when you get community goals. Like, I think that's what I'm gonna do with that. Oops. As long as nobody scans me, I'll be fine. Let's get out of here. Did someone just detect me as I was leaving there? No, I don't think so. <sighs> okay, I'm hoping the mission itself updates it because I don't want to have to type that thing. Sometimes these missions don't update the next location, which is very frustrating. This actually doesn't seem that far away. Is this it? Oh, it's just above us. How many jumps? Five jumps. That's quite a few jumps. Okay. Do it. I'm getting the hang of this bad boy. Water sports are especially popular in this water world. I'm actually kind of low on fuel. 
do a couple of scoop runs. Well, we're not really low. We're like above half. Oh, this ship does not actually heat up that much during fuel scoop, which is good. Oh, it is so much easier to do fuel scooping with a joystick. It's not even comparable. Let's get out of here. This is awesome. Guys, I'm telling you right now, this is awesome. Yep, even B Criminal Mastermind still on board. But we got them mad skills. We got them mad skills to evade the police. To evade the po po. Also, I don't know which um which reputation I'm gonna get out of that. I'm hoping it's Empire reputation. It's just I was mostly thinking about the dollar bills, yo. The dollar bills. Them big dollar bills. But, now that I have done this, I also want to put some guns up on this bad boy. I'm also considering selling, reselling the, um, the python. It's like, I'm curious about something and I couldn't find the answer yesterday. Maybe if there's, uh, some elite dangerous veterans out there, maybe you guys know the answer to this. If I buy a python on Liang Rui's system, Liang Rui's system, which has a 15% discount, and then I bring that python back and sell it on a regular system, will I be making a 5% profit? Because you lose 10% of the cost of the ship. However, since I bought it 15% cheaper, technically speaking, if I sell it, I should still make a 5% profit. Is that a thing? Or am I just thinking out of my ass? Or did they nerf that? Oh shoot, I was looking at chat. Almost threw myself into the sun. That would have been bad. It's like the thruster makes so much difference from using R1 and L1 the thrust. It's like not even comparable. Devil's voice. Pretty sure you can do that. Yeah, because if I can do that, then what I can do basically is um, sell the python, get all my money back, and then get the ship that I was originally planning on getting, which was the Asp. That's my plan. <clears throat> Because I actually wanted to get an Asp, and I ended up getting that. One more jump. One thing that I would very much like to see them do as well is use... Uh, some sort of head tracking with uh, the PlayStation camera. That'd be cool. Kind of like Track IR. You guys know that back in the day when uh, Elite Dangerous originally launched, people were talking about Track IR, and I kept thinking to myself, that's such a dumb thing. Such a dumb fucking thing. Track IR. Psh, whatever. And nowadays, I'm like, dude, Track IR. Track IR actually looks like it'd be pretty fucking cool. <laughs> The selling price for ship slash modules is always based on what you originally paid. Well, that would suck. And we're here. Okay, where's this planet of yours? Uh, 
Let me take a look at it. Right here. going to be doing all this then as I come back they're going to shoot me before I actually get inside the station I'm going to have to get inside that station fast That planet looks cool. Okay, let's see what he wants now. You want to go back home? Okay, let's see if we can get you back home in one piece. Because that part is going to be hard. Especially because the cops are probably on the lookout for me now. So, let's take a quick look around. How do I get back home? How do I get you back home? More like it. Assuming this is going to track... The location we want to go. Yep. Interestingly, it only locks onto the systems. But I want you to lock on here. <laughs> Guys, this is going to be awesome. I love how it straight up just says wanted up there. Okay. This is going to be a beautiful thing. We're going to make it. Okay. Line us up. Charge the FSD. Let's get the hell out of here. This is going to be the real deal, you guys. The serious smuggling run the first time I've been wanted in Elite Dangerous. It's quite a thrill. There's no slowing down, bro. There's only speeding up. We don't have all that much fuel. I'm gonna have to take a break. How many jumps is it? Six jumps. We're not going to make six jumps on this fuel. Four, three, Dude, I'm going to jump on that system. I'm going to hit silent running. And I'm going to throttle my ass inside that fucking space station. It's going to be glorious. 
We're gonna enter that space station with boost. 300 kilometers now. What the fuck is this? What the fuck is this? Why am I jumping to this star? Why did I just jump onto a star that was not a fuel scoopable star? Something went wrong there. Root plotting is not working. Root plotting is not working as it should. Every jump takes us closer to a fiery death. We should scoop on this one. Actually, is there a station nearby? Nope. This is just the scoop system. Well, I did just say it's a lot easier scooping on this. Problem is my fuel scoop, as you can see, is not particularly impressive. I can't park. Yeah, I can't park. The heat's gonna keep going up. I wish I could park next to the sun, but I can't do that. If I can keep this distance from the sun, it's pretty stable. We're still overheating. I definitely need a better fuel scoop if I wanna if I wanna be jumping this far with this vessel. Because like staying here this long on account of a shitty fuel scoop. That's no good. Would be funny to see him needing to call the fuel rats. I have not needed the fuel rats since that first interaction I've had with them. How many jumps do we still have? Four jumps? We can do a couple more. Let's go. Scar Hammer, is this online or solo? This is solo. I mostly play solo. Particularly now where um, I'm not necessarily swimming in money. So... And I just spent a whole lot of it, so I don't want to take any chances. Even be rats where the fuel rats dude they're like those guys that help people out if they run out of fuel so yeah it turns out the default setup for the hodas is actually perfect the one thing that i would do is that button that i added for frame shift toggling which for some reason it's not triangle by default on the hodas more jumps so a little bit of minor scooping on the next one and we're gonna be good to go we're gonna take a criminal mastermind right to the heart of the Empire 
They change tires if you get a flat and don't have a spare too. <laughs> Where we're going, we don't need tires. It looks like the next jump is pretty small. So we're good to go. Okay, guys. This is it. Walking into the wanted system with a criminal mastermind on our hull. It's gonna be glorious. I can't even tell you guys the adrenaline rush right now. Okay, let's go ahead and find us where the friggin' slot is. Where's that slot? There. There. Jesus frack, where is that slot? Dude, are you kidding me? Oh, there it is. There she is. Okay. Now let's realign. Slot is above. Okay, it's at the very top. That means we'll have to come in from above. And see, this is why I like being able to look in the cockpit. Oops. Oh crap, this cockpit is actually... Shit. This cockpit's covered. Oh well, that's not gonna help us. Usually I, I use the cockpit to keep track of my target. Pretty sure the slot is this way. Over aligned a little bit. Over aligned a lot. Super focused right now, you guys. Mega hyper. We need to align this sucker just like to perfection. Because we're not going to be wasting any time. We're going to boost in in silent mode. So no shields to break our fall as we boost our asses inside that space station. Ooh, shit. Oh, shit. Here we go. Welcome to the 
<laughs> we in there. <laughs> oh shit. Relax. We don't have to be running silent anymore. Whew. That was a fucking rush. Oh, let's actually land this bird. You guys saw that? Entering the space station max speed. <laughs> that was such a fucking rush. That was crazy talk. Okay. Let's turn in our uh, our little dude there, shall we? Good work, pilot. So, the reputation we got was for Cubio Jet Council. Now I'm curious about something. Cubio Jet Council. Frack! It's not allowed with anyone. I wanted to start grinding, um, uh, rep. What's the message we got here? Promotion to Surveyor. Exploration skills. Okay. Whatever. Uh, can I sell some data, by the way? Like, I need some friggin' money, man. Goddamn money. Psh. Whatever. No dice. Then again, I've, I've just gotten this ship again. That's why it's got no data on it. Uh, okay. So, with 12 million, I would actually like to think about outfitting this ship with a couple of guns. Not sure if this space station has them. Man, the hottest is awesome, and I only had to change one thing, and actually, let me show you, because you're going to want to do this too, you slacker. Uh, let me just show Tom here. So, Tom, uh, remember I told you that something that was really pissing me off about your setup on the hottest was that uh, you had to always press triangle and up and down to choose when you want it to enter hyperspace do the hypercruise all this other shit here's what you got to do you got to go to options controls and then it is in flight miscellaneous toggle frame shift drive and then you'll only need triangle for both super cruise and hyperspace everything as well as to leave hyperspace, uh, leave Super Cruise, you just got to press triangle, and it is so much better. And the other thing that I want you to know is I told you that I wanted to look around the cockpit, and I'll do that in a bit. I'll show you how to do that. Heart points. Okay, so we got large heart point and two mediums. So I think for this... Should I do beam lasers? Are they even gimbaled? This is an actual turret. This might be interesting, although it's expensive as a motherfucker. How about gimbaled instead? Gimbaled's only half the price. And it will allow me to test it out. So let's test out these. I mean, I don't need turrets on this gun, on this ship, actually. So that doesn't even make sense. 
Let's go. Beam laser with gimbal. Buying options. Exchange. Now we're going to put a big fucking cannon on top. Actually, no. No. I got an even better idea. Dude, this is the perfect ship for this. Oh, guys, this is it. Done deal. It's done deal. <laughs> Rail gun. Oh, shit. It consumes way too much power. Fuck. I can't get a rail gun. I can never get it. I always want to get it. I can never get it. Shit. Anyway, let's get us another another beam laser. Uh, browse shop. It consumes way too much. Although the beam lasers themselves, they're... They're a pain in the ass, too. Bruno Guerrero, uh, that's not a problem, because if you're in the planet, then you just use the super cruise mode, which is triangle up. You know, but for most cases, when you're not with an obscured uh, target, you can just press triangle. Which is usually I don't have an obscure target. And if I do, I know that I can do it another way. So it's not really a problem, it's just an option. Uh, now, for the empty large hard point. Dude, at some point, I'd really like to get a proper cannon. This ship has the maneuverability for me to pull off a gimbaled cannon. Is this gimbaled or turreted? It's gimbaled. One million. It's like, oh shit, this thing costs, uses way too much power. Guess the multi cannon will have to do. I just need a gimbal one. Is this fixed? This is fixed. This is gimbaled. Jesus Christ. The power draw on these weapons is way too much. Way too much of a power draw. I figured the multi-cannon wouldn't be that much of a power drop. I don't actually know. I don't actually know what I'm going to do then. Dude, if I could have a rail gun, I'd be so happy. How's my power core? Is it the best? Oh, shit, we got a 4C. Which is the best that I can get here. I need a 4A power plant. Need a 4A power plant so that I can put in my next weapon. Otherwise, it's not going to work out. But for now, we'll just keep the lasers. See if we can do another run. What do we got here? Manuel Ortiz. Transport Gerald Wilson. Transport Jess Grimes. See, this is the perfect mission for this ship. This right here. Boom. Two million. Straight up. It's the perfect mission for this ship. This is exactly why I got this ship. Sell your python and buy some goodies for your diamond back. I gotta be honest. I want to sell the python. Like, I don't like the python. 
the more I think about it, the more likely I'm going to just bite the bullet, lose like four million or however much it was, and just sell the the the, the viper again. The type, the, what's it called again? Fucking python. It's actually Nox Tom's fault that I bought that fucking thing. Oh shit. Hey, thanks, bro. Fucking guy. Attention, Commander. Collisions will result in cost and fines. Fucking guy. Okay. Use inheritance. I hope it's not a friggin' planet. Merdia. Okay. There's no system data. I gotta get my ass out there. All as roll. Push my intolerance to get a man's ship. Dude, the Python is not a man's ship. I just it's just a ship that looks cool and I don't like it. It's right now it's just a useless fucking brick sitting on a space station. That's what my Python is. It's a useless brick. I'm actually thinking about investing a whole bunch on the diamondback. Cause like I can do a whole lot of really cool shit with the diamondback. But yeah, Tom, the other thing that I was telling you is, remember how I told you I wanted to look around the cockpit? You can totally do it with the HOTUS, and it's built in by default. It's the R3 button plus the hat switch. Yep, you should sell the Python, no upgrades, yep, it's shit. I mean, I've upgraded some stuff on it, I'll show you guys uh, after this run. But, like, I still feel that the parts on it are kind of garbage. And then to top it off, it's like I tried doing combat with it last night. Like, I put a bunch of really good guns on it, too. Uh, and I got my ass handed to me by an Imperial Clipper. And I, and I was like, I just don't know how to use this ship. This is just a huge fucking ship. It's like, with my keelback, I took on a python while I was getting attacked by three other ships. And I killed the Python and still managed to leave the system without dying. See, that is using a ship to its very limits. With the Python, which is a big ass fucking ship, costs like three, not three, it's actually like, <coughs> it's like 25 times the price of my keel back and I couldn't even take on an Imperial Clipper. See, that's the problem with knowing your ship. And like, I knew the keel back. I knew how to fight with the keelback, I knew what I had to do. <coughs> I don't know what to do with the python. <coughs> Sorry about that, you guys. <coughs> Let me get some water. have to pop another cough drop.
Yeah, exactly what Devil's Voice says. If you don't know what you're doing with a ship, you shouldn't buy it. And mine is just the perfect example of that. Man, this friggin' thing. Okay, we don't know where our target is, so we have to hit the nav beacon. That's just the thing, I'm not necessarily looking for a ship that does a whole lot of fighting. That's not my style. I like a ship that's multi-purpose, which is why I love the keelback so much. It was actually pretty good in the fight because of the fighter hangar. It was very good for transport, and it was very good for passengers as well. It was, ju it was just like a really good all-round ship. Press the button by mistake. We're gonna have to take this guy to a planet. Yep. I love the boost towns on the Diamondback. I gotta say, though, I am loving the Hoda setup. Paven B, I can't thank you enough, dude. Friggin' thing is awesome. It just gives you not only much better control of the ship, it gives you a much better sense of immersion, too. Engage. I'm not dying enough? Dude, it was such a thrill that first mission, though. 
<clears throat> I'm sorry for not dying enough. <laughs> okay, I need to be able to see the thing, so let's flip her over. See, much better. No, 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 no. We overshot a little bit there. Planetary approaches is still something I gotta work on. This should let us glide our way in if we keep an angle like this. Which will be perfect, because that's what you want. You want to glide your way into the planet. At least in my opinion, it's the most efficient way of getting to your destination. Set up an approach vector that will get you to glide there. There it is. I love this sound, the sound of when you're dropping into the atmosphere, it's beautiful. It's just like the actual ship creaking, cracking, it's awesome. That's right, we don't want to get uh, scanned either. Forgot about that. Your docking request has been approved. Proceed at your earliest convenience to pad 01. I should have done silent running, but I'm kind of late for that. Fuck! Are they going to be upset? Attention, Commander. Imperial protocols require that you reduce your speed. Access denied. Oh, shit. Yeah, I thought this was going to happen. I knew I should have done silent running. He's pretty upset, let me guess. He's like, dude, what the fuck? I don't appreciate your fragrant- <laughs> You're an illegal- What? I don't handle death very well. Miserable. Take me to the closest station, I will find a more capable pilot there. Dude, fuck you! Fucking guy, can you believe this shit? He's an illegal passenger. How is this any of my fault? How is it my fault that you're breaking the law, motherfucker? Like, what the actual fuck? Fucking guy. 
I'm gonna land there too. I don't give a damn. Watch me. Think I'm not gonna land there? I don't give a fuck. I know I can still be scanned while in silent. Relax. We're fine. We're fine. This is not a problem. It's not a problem at all. Maybe a little bit. We don't need beam lasers right now. We cannot detect the heat signature, Commander. Please check your system. Under attack. Man, it's a good thing we bought those beam lasers, man. They really came in handy. <laughs> Ship burning. This is fine. It's not a problem. <laughs> Aw, we failed a mission. Reputation Empire minus zero percent. <laughs> My time with the Empire is really going well. It's not a problem. <laughs> awesome though okay how much money are we at we're at 10 million okay so i told you guys i wanted to show you my uh my python so let's go ahead and do that right after i clear my transactions and i need to pay my fine oh it's a bounty okay whatever yeah jesse grimes died dude Jesse Grimes is fucking dead. Also, I'm not wanted anymore because my ship fucking exploded. So, that's not a problem. Maybe you should tra sh stop transporting their criminals. Never! They pay so much! Are you kidding me? Look at this. It's just a bunch of criminals out here waiting to get transported. You want to see? Like, let's see. Colette Burton, Sightseeing Adventure. Transport Gerald Wilson. Cleo Figueroa. See? Right here. Haley Jackson. I bet you he's a criminal. Actually, no. He's just a rich tourist. See, this would actually be really good. How long do I have to get you there? One hour and 40 minutes? We can do that. Now, can I have him in my ship and then swap ships? Is that a thing? You have passengers. Oh, I can't show you the ship now. Damn it. Well, I need to I need to make some freaking money anyway. Let's do another run. We got to make up for the fact that we just lost that one run. Mm -mm. 
Whoa. But this is my jam, like transport missions is actually one of my favorite things to do. And beyond like, um, where am I supposed to take this guy? Can I get the actual destination straight up? Yes, I can. Sweet. And as I was saying, beyond community goals, I think transport missions is where I've done the most money with. Nothing but criminals. Criminals. This is how many jumps? Probably three, I would imagine. This should be a fairly easy mission. A lot easier than the... The other one we're trying to do. Even though we should have had the other one, it just took me a long ass time to land. I still maintain it's not my fault that he is, uh, he's wanted. What do you want? Consumer technology, too. Oh, well, depends on whether we pass by something that has it. If Shu Wei Sector has a space station where I can buy that, I will totally buy it for you. If not, well, you're in the shitter. Devil's voice. Is Quince like an imperial system or something? I mean, I guess I could also stack passengers for my python in that place. That's also a possibility. Problem is that you have to get passengers that are all going to the same system. And that can be really boring. You know, mission stacking, I think, is a little bit on the boring side. Like, oh, now I'm going to log out. Now I'm going to log back in. Log out. Log back in. Asp Explorer is a great ship to make money in, right? In my opinion, it is probably one of the best ships to make money in for the price. Because it's got a lot of versatility. The Asp Explorer was the ship that I, w that I went in to buy and ended up with the, with the Python. Oh shit, this fucking sucks. God damn it. Is there anything closer by? Well, <clears throat> he's not getting his things because that thing is just way too far away. Way too far away, dude. You crazy. You crazy. I think I'm going to buy an ask myself. Yeah, I think that's just what I got to do. <laughs> I'm going to get rid of the python. Sell that sucker. And then go back and buy an ASP.
Although if I buy an asp, I might end up selling this diamond back as well. Which will put me at a net negative overall for this. For last night's um for last night's journey. I don't know. Then again, I guess you can outfit the diamond back to travel way more than the asp, and then I could use the diamond the diamond back mostly for taking passengers, exploration, that kind of thing. Then swap to the asp if I want to do some trading. Flame inhaler, is this kind of what you wish No Man's Sky was like? No. It's different than what I was expecting for No Man's Sky. Like, unlike most people, I didn't have a huge problem with No Man's Sky. It's just I've never felt uh, as attached to No Man's Sky as I've felt to Elite Dangerous. And I think a big part of that is the multiplayer possibilities. Because, like, for instance, I play with my friend who's on chat, Malsh. I play with him all the time. And where is No Man's Sky? Or just playing by yourself. So, like, like most games, the progression feels great if you have friends to share that progression with. That's the thing. You can use a regular controller. Right now I'm using the HOTUS flight stick because it's just a lot more fun and cooler and overall more precise, but probably I could still do better with the controller at this point because I'm still not super used to the HOTUS. But yeah, I've played with this bad boy right here. And I can play just fine with it. So you don't need a special controller. You can do just about everything you need to do with the PS4 uh, controller. Uncrossed, I can tell you all about the controls. Let me just turn this sucker in. I was just kissing the space station. There are some controls that sometimes I'm still not used to. So when there are throttled up instead of 
climbing up and down. Where the hell's my landing pad? Oh. He's going to be upset because I didn't buy him consumer technology. But all I'm going to say to that is pay me, motherfucker. you going to pay me, motherfucker. Yes, you are. Yes, you is. That's a good little boy. And you're going to thank me, too. Now then. <clears throat> It'd be good if I could get someone that goes to the same system I'm going. That's probably not going to happen. Well, that sucks. Either way, let's get the hell out of Dodge. Head back home. Six rail guns on the Asp Explorer. Dude! That's it. We're selling the Python. We're getting an Asp Explorer. And we're putting sail six rails gun rail guns on that bitch. Straight up. Six rail guns. Best power money can buy. Just stick six rail guns on that sucker. It's gonna be glorious. Get out of here. How many jumps is this? Three jumps. Dude. The jumping capabilities of this ship are just like fucking insane though. Been taking so many cough drops today that I can barely feel my tongue anymore. And then with the leftover money, what I'm going to do is I'm going to deck out a clipper when I can get one. Because that's the actual ship I want. I'll just have to go grind some um, Federation rep. Not Federation. Empire. Empire. For the Empire. Oh yeah, that's right. I was supposed to show you how to... What each of the things does. Let's do it um, when we get to when we get to our station. Since we're not doing anything illegal, nobody should actually shoot at us. Hopefully, potentially, who knows? Oh, we're already home. I was like eighty light years away. Three jumps. Love it. Love it.
Okay, so, <clears throat> so actually I can show you the stuff here. Let me... Where's the PlayStation button on this thing? Oh, it's here. So I think if I go to settings... Devices, station camera, adjust. Okay. So, here's the joystick. And basically, the joystick, uh, the pitch, up, down, left, right, and then you have yaw. You twist the joystick to the left and to the right. That's the yaw for your ship. Obviously, you have your fire here. I haven't shot it once. I haven't pressed this button once since I started playing. Uh, then on the top, you have this for your secondary fire. You have L3, which is not really doing anything right now, I don't think, because we don't have alternate flight controls because with the joystick, you don't need them. And then you have your hat, which is used as the D-pad. So this is what you use to navigate menus in your ship and stuff. So like the same way that on the controller, you would press square, and uh, left, right, D-pad here, you will press square, but on the thruster side, I will show it to you on the thruster side, and then the D-pad to go to the different locations. You can also use R3 plus D-pad to look around the cockpit. But that's like the basic joystick controls. Remember, all of this stuff is customizable, so you can completely change it to whatever you want. Although I'd recommend go with the default because it works really well. Also, this thing has a LAN port? You got a phone port? What the fuck is that for? This is crazy. I'm gonna hook up a phone to my joystick. Okay. And then here you have the thruster unit. Obviously, thrust up. This comes to a neutral. There's like three different points on the thruster. So like this is full thrust. This is neutral. And then there's backward thrust still. And then here you see all of these buttons. These are gonna be used for your horizontal movement. So left, right, up, down. You know, just move the ship like shh, 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 shh. you use these four, and then uh, and here you have the faceplate buttons, which do pretty much the same thing that they do other controllers. So engage hyperdrive, boost, select your targets, deploy hard points, and navigate menus, stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, this is pretty much how it works, and it works fine. Just takes a little bit getting used to. Let me get back in the game. I think I'm, my ship might have exploded because I was too close to the sun. And if it hasn't exploded, I will be surprised. Hey, it hasn't exploded. I am surprised. But that's how it works. Clipper is a pretty ship and fast too. Dude, I like the Clipper. I don't know, there's something about the Clipper that I like. But anyway, I want to show you guys the Python before I sell it. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna show it to you and then I'm gonna instantly sell it. <laughs> After I downgrade all the components inside of it, of course, and make as much profit as I possibly can. Not really profit. We're gonna come in at a loss for that one, but still. We've gotten like 4 million today, so I think we'll be okay. Oh crap, I overshot it. I was distracted. I am too fast. You're welcome, Uncrossed. I kind of think that's something I should have done immediately after I figured out the controls. But just remember, everything's customizable, so you can change everything to your liking, but... You know, for me, the default setup is actually pretty damn good. It's gonna be hard for me to like, I wanna go to my friend's house, taking my controller, and actually playing this with my controller after this. It's gonna be hard.
Okay, now let's get in there. So that you guys can see a really big ship. She is so sexy. The voice on this uh, operator here. I like her. Begin lockdown. Okay, so let's take a look. Outfitting shipyard. Can sell the stored ship for 54 million. I will still be at a loss because I've already put a lot of money on it. Okay, boys, welcome to the Python. So if we look around the cockpit, you'll see much bigger ship, like straight up friggin huge it's a two seater. The seat is offset from the middle. You're on the left seat. <laughs> you can have a, a passenger in there. The cockpit is actually pretty cool, particularly from the outside. So, like, if we look outside here. This ship actually has one of the best cockpits in the game because it's not some protruding thing. Which is very frustrating when ships have, like, to me at least, when they have the protruding cockpit. I get it. It's cool to watch and stuff. But, like, from a combat standpoint, it makes no fucking sense. So, this ship is the only ship which cockpit actually makes some sort of sense. And this is what she looks like. She is big. She makes a whole lot of noise. But, I mean, it's a cool ship. The problem is, in my opinion, I've spent too much money on it, and I don't know what to do with it then it's not properly upgraded. Like, let me show you guys what, where we're running here. Because again, I don't know exactly how I should be setting up my Python. So right now we got like 14 million. Obviously we have to keep like at least 5 million in the bank for eventualities. Uh, and that means we could afford to spend something like, wait, how much do I have right now? I don't have 14, I have 12. I have 12. So. I can spend something like 7 million upgrading it further, but I don't think it's going to do anything good. Now let me show you the outfitting. So on our hard points, I put two burst lasers and a beam laser. And let me tell you, these things deal almost no damage. At least they dealt almost no damage against the clipper I was fighting last night. Then we got two multi-cannons. These definitely deal no damage. These are just like complete garbage against the ships that I was fighting. So that's the conclusion that I got. I almost died last night when I, when I went into a fight. The good thing about the Python is that she's so big, ain't nobody disrupting my frame shift charging. So it was whatever. But this, is the, this was what I, what I had thought for a combat layout, and it sucked. I was super disappointed. Then, I don't have any utility mounts, because I don't even know what I would put in here. And then, you get to the core internals. I have the best frameshift drive, so that I can jump. 
We got lightweight alloys because I didn't get around to buying other ones. We have 7D power plant because uh, I couldn't buy a better one because power plants for this ship are fucking expensive. We have 6C thrusters again because they're expensive as hell. I didn't even touch life support. We have a 7E power distributor because I couldn't actually find a place that sold better ones. Uh, we have 6C sensors. Uh, we got a regular ass fuel tank. We don't have any utility mounts like I said. I wanted to get to optional internals. See, I barely even touched this. I got a better shield generator and I didn't touch anything else. Because, to be honest, I don't know what I would put in here. I don't know what I would do with this ship because she's got way too many compartments, you know? And I kind of feel that with its limited jumping capabilities, if I don't upgrade it all in one go, then it's just straight up a waste of money. And that's pretty much what we have with the Python. She does look cool. And she flies okay. Like, let me just take her out for a spin. I'm so scared of taking this ship out, out for a spin. Because, like, it's almost like all of the hours I've put into Elite Dangerous have pretty much gone into this ship. And I don't like it. <laughs> it's, like, one of the worst feelings possible. So, let me get this bad boy out of here. It's like with this ship, the mail slot actually feels kind of small. Turning on outside camera. She looks great from the outside too. I can see the back of her, looks real good. See the lower sections, the insides. Now we can turn on free camera. Where is part three? Whoa, what? Oh, the camera moves with the thrust. You can get a nice little pan here. Oops. I guess you guys can barely see it because it's so dark in here. There's no actual light. But it's like, trust me, the ship looks good. And it's kind of awkward. I'm not used to moving the camera with the joystick. But it's like there, that's kind of what she looks like. <clears throat> How do I... Yeah, I can't move the camera with the, <laughs> the joystick. It's so weird. Oh, there's a zooming button right there. Anyway, let's go back inside and land this sucker before I sell her. How far away are we from the thing? kilometers. Wow, we moved 21 kilometers while I was giving guys a tour. Yeah, she's a beast in comments. Like, I'm not saying the ship is bad. That's, I think a lot of people might be thinking that I'm saying the Python is a bad ship. I'm not saying the Python is a bad ship. I am literally saying the Python is more ship than I can handle right now. Because I, I just don't have enough experience in Elite Dangerous to own a ship like Python. And that is the biggest problem. And that is why I'm going to sell it. Because until I know more and I know exactly what I'm going to be putting in every single optional section of the ship, then it's a waste of money. And it's just like, it's just like sitting there. It basically, it's like you buy, you know those people that buy fancy cars and then they never drive them? That's kind of like what the Python would be for me. Which is why I'm going to go ahead and just sell it and get something that I will actually drive. And then eventually, in the future, I might get... I, I don't want to get the Python even, because it's not... I don't know. The Python was just like one of those impulse purchases, and it just turned out to be a really bad one. Request approved. You may now proceed to landing pad 38. 
No, she's not just appearance. This is a good ship. The difference is I couldn't kill... Let's put it like this. The Python is a 50-something million credit ship. And yesterday I went to fight the Imperial Clipper, which is a 22 million credit ship. And the Imperial Clipper kicked my ass. So a ship that's worth half the credits kicked my ass. It's not as linear as that, but it should give you an idea. Whereas I had the Keelback, which is a 3 million ship, and I killed a Python, which is a 50 million ship, with the Keelback solo, while I was getting fired upon. So, you know, it's, it's all about knowing your ship. And you will do great things with ships that you're comfortable with, and you're not going to do jack shit with a ship that you have no idea what you're doing. Which is my problem right now, but we'll fix it. Need to get used to this still. But anyway, guys, that is going to be it for this live stream. Uh, hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I love the HOTUS setup, it's really awesome. Uh, I'm going to be doing some more Elite Dangerous live streams uh, later on. But the next stream for today is going to be the Destiny 2 beta. And it's going to be shortly after I finish this one. I'll be start booting up a stream for Destiny. So hopefully I will see you guys there. Uh, thank you all very much for hanging out. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. Subscribe if you're new so that you're always notified. All that good stuff. If you're watching the video on the man after the fact, uh, comments, feedback, always appreciated. And I'd also like to apologize for coughing and stuff. I'm still sick. I'm really sorry about it. Nothing I can do about that right now. Thank you guys for watching. See you on the next one.